Today we are talking about the causes of lower abdominal pain and also we are talking about spotting. If you are a woman and you are experiencing spotting, then in this video we are going to talk about the cause of lower abdominal pain. We are going to talk about the cause of spotting. Jared Massa, the health educator, is the name of the channel and without further ado, we are going to talk about all this in today's video. So, when you are a woman, let's say you are between 10 years up to 40 years and you are experiencing lower abdominal pain, lower abdominal pain in pregnancy or even if you are not pregnant, it could mean that you are having some issues. You could be having cysts. Cysts are growths which actually be inside your womb or outside your womb. And then also you could be experiencing infections in your womb. For example, you could be having conditions like endometritis. So endometritis is when your womb has free fluid. In this video today, we are going to talk about lower abdominal pain and then also spotting. So if you are spotting or if you are seeing those little clots of blood, it could actually mean that you are pregnant or it could mean that you are having issues with your cervix. Probably your cervix could be incompetent. Gerard Massa, the health educator, is the name of the channel. I welcome you and keep watching. We've got lots of videos for you. Keep watching. Hello, my friend. I welcome you for today's lesson. We are talking about something that is very important. And without further ado, we are going to answer a question by one of our subscribers. And our, one of our subscribers asked a question and she said that she has tried to see her periods, but the periods are not really uh, being seen. The question for today is, I have been trying to get pregnant for two months, but I always get my period. I have been trying to get pregnant for two months, but I always get my period. And I don't know what my problem is. So, this is the Fertility Show with Gerard Massa, the health educator. And without further ado, we are going to answer today's question by beginning, uh, by understanding what we call the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle is divided into two. We have the menstrual phase, uh, we have the follicular phase. How to calculate ovulation for a Saturday cycle. In this video today, you are going to learn how to calculate your ovulation if your cycle runs for Saturdays. Gerard Massa, the health educator, is the name of the channel. Remember to subscribe for new videos we put out every day. Without further ado, the ovulation cycle for a Saturday calculation specifically begins with us having this example. We are taking an example of the month of August and assuming you started your periods on 3rd and then you saw your periods on 4th and then you saw your periods on 5th. Let's say a show three days in your periods. If we want to calculate your ovulation date or the date when you are most likely to get pregnant, the day when you are releasing a mature egg, also known as a graphene follicle, let's say we have to begin counting from the first day you saw your periods. If you saw your periods on third, you saw your periods. Sorry about that. If you saw your periods on 3rd and then 4th and 5th, we are just taking this as an example. It could be any other day. It could actually even be 2nd. So, assuming you see your periods on 3rd, 4th and 5th, and you want to cal calculate your ovulation date, you s simply get the first day you saw your periods, which is on 3rd, and then you count the three days you are going to be into your periods but the counting has to begin from the first day when you saw your periods and then you specifically count 14 days from the first day you saw your period remember once again we've said that you saw your periods on third you saw it on fourth and then you saw it on fifth so count 14 days beginning with the first day you saw your periods so we shall say one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 
11, 12, 13, 14. So the 14th day, which is actually it's going to be a Sunday on 6th, uh, on 16th, the 14th day is your date of ovulation. Specifically, this is the day when your hormones, that is uh, luteinizing hormone and estrogen, are at their maximum. When we look at the ovulation calendar, you notice that during the 16th day, your hormone, that is the luteinizing hormone and the estrogen hormone, are at their peak. This is the date you are ovulating and this is the date you are most likely to get pregnant. Assuming when you have a 30 day cycle, assuming you spent three days. But if you spent four months, I mean, if you, sorry about that, if you spent four days, let's say you, you started your periods on second, still the same method applies. You have to begin counting from the first day you saw your periods and that is let's say let's take an example of second you still say one two three is the those are the days you've spent in your period so to get your ovulation date sp simply count 14 days but strictly you have to begin from the first day you saw your periods so we shall count and say one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13 14 so your ovulation date or your date of ovulation is going to be 15 the formula is that you have to begin counting from the first day when you've seen your periods then count 14 days it doesn't matter where the date is going to fall but you just have to count 14 days if you saw your periods on 9th still you just have to count 14 days and you shall we shall say 1 2 3 and then, of course, those are the days you are in your messes. We go back to the first day you saw your periods and we shall count and say one. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So still your date of ovulation is going to be. On Saturday 22nd, assuming you started seeing your periods on 9th, your date of ovulation is 22nd, which is actually on Saturday. So in what we have to learn from today's lesson is that you simply have to begin counting from the first day when you see your periods and then count 14 days. On the 14th day, there is an allowance of three days upwards and then there's an allowance of three days backwards in other words if your ovulation date is 19th taking this as an example we have to we give an allowance of three days back and then three days in front the main reason for this is that the two hormones luteinizing hormone and LH when they rise they rise over a period of time they rise over a period of number of days you can never tell because when the egg is released the female egg is released it lasts for at least 12 to 24 hours whereas a male sperm survives for at least up to five days so to increase your chances of getting pregnant if your ovulation date is on 19th it's always advisable that you be with your partner play sex around the, the the two days prior to one to two days prior to if you're seeing your ovulation if your ovulation predictor kits are telling you that yes your LOH or the luteinizing hormone levels are high, the cervical mucus is thick and sticky, your basal body temperature has risen, all these are indicators of ovulation. So it's advisable that at least you be with your partner one day or two days prior to. You could actually be together for the whole of this week, for the whole of this period. The chances of getting pregnant are really increased. Gerard Massa, the health educator, is the name of the channel. Let me know if you have any questions. And as we are summarizing in today's video, we've talked about the calculation of ovulation date or the, to cal the calculation of the date of ovulation for a Saturday cycle. And we have said that if you started your periods on this date, this date and this date, you calculate your ovulation date by simply beginning from the first day 
you saw your periods and then count 14 days it doesn't matter where the 14th day is going to fall it could actually be here it could be you count 14 days and then on the 14th day add three days in front three days back that is your fertile window the days you are most likely to get pregnant and then the 14th day specifically is when the egg is released or is when ovulation occurs Thanks a lot for staying with me for this for this far and I hope you've learned something. Let me know what you've learned in the comments. Ask me all your questions. I will answer them personally. But please, this is our challenge for today. Let me know what you've learned in today's lesson. And please remember to share, subscribe for new videos I put out every day. Gerard Massa, the health educator, is the name of the channel. And please share with me. Connect with me on all my social media handles, but also you could also submit all your questions. If you want to talk with me personally on my WhatsApp, it is plus two five six seven zero one seven nine seven eight seven six. That's my WhatsApp is plus two five six seven zero one seven nine seven eight seven six. Subscribe for new videos I put out every day. You'll be the first to get the videos I put out. May God bless and protect us all. And please see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Thank you, my friend, for attending today's lesson. I hope you have learned something. And please, if you have any questions in regards to what we've just discussed, leave your questions in the comments. Ask me your questions. I will answer all your questions. On this channel, Gerard Massa, the health educator, I talk about women's health. Have yourself a fantastic and healthy day. And may God bless us all. Bye-bye.